Ohio, good morning guys. I'm ready to continue on our crazy adventure here. We're gonna be leaving Yufuin and making our way up to Yamaguchi Prefecture, which is supposed to be beautiful. Now today we actually don't have a super bad drive. It's about two and a half hours, which is gonna be really nice. And Yamaguchi houses some of Japan's most beautiful structures, as well as one of the most preserved samurai towns in the entire country, which is going to be amazing. I am super pumped for that. But first, before we can do anything, let's fuel up and try and find a convenient, get some food, get some snacks, and get ready for our road trip. I am super excited to continue Japan in a van with you guys. Welcome to episode three. And just like that, we're back on the road. Yufun was incredible. But now it's time to keep making our way north. And first things first, Kambini stop. Today's pretty big. We're officially leaving the Kyushu region. Heading up to Yamaguchi puts us in the Chugoku region of Japan. The Chugoku region is filled with so much beauty, history, and even catastrophe. And throughout this trip, we're going to get to see a little bit of it all. On today's trip, we also cross over the Kanman Bridge, which connects the Kyushu region to the main island of Japan. We are now officially in Yamaguchi. One hour to go. Turn left. Our first stop of the day. This is crazy. It always blows my mind how beautiful pieces of Japanese history is just like nestled deep, whether in the mountains or right next to, to homes, it, it's crazy. We are deep in Yamaguchi here, and this is one of the top three pagoda statues in, in the entire country, which is going to be beautiful. Tons of history. Welcome to Rurikoji Temple. Immediately as you walk in, you can feel the history. Rurikoji Temple was built in the 1400s. It's best known for its five-story pagoda that is considered to be a national treasure. Temple, they have the incense that you kind of waft over yourself as healing or whatever this temple is known for. Also do your own incense here, so. Dude, we got absolutely roasted. It's under construction. No. Get wrecked, dude. Oh man, what a bummer. Well, this would have been super cool. It says construction's due until 2026. We we're close. I'm sure it's absolutely beautiful. They say it was constructed in the 1400s, so I can only imagine what this thing actually looks like and what kind of renovations they're doing. Unfortunately, this time we're gonna miss it. But it's okay. Like we said, that's not all we have planned. We're gonna get out of here and actually head to one of the most preserved samurai cities in all of Japan, which I'm super bummed for. Now, we may have missed out on the pagoda, but I still made sure to take in all the beauty around. In front of the pagoda, you can actually find a big koi pond and beautiful garden. It's definitely one of the most epic places I've ever been in Japan. As much of a bummer it is that this pagoda is closed, this is still absolutely beautiful. And look at this koi pond. These are the biggest koi I've ever seen in my whole life. Look at that big guy. <laughs> They're beautiful. Holy. I'm so bummed it's closed, but we're gonna make the best out of it. Who knows, maybe someday we'll be back. Another find in the wild, 
R33 GTR. That thing is sick. Next up on the list was to drive to the opposite side of the region to a small town called Hagi. Hagi is said to be one of the most well-preserved samurai towns in all of Japan. You guys know I had to see this one. Welcome to the city of Hagi. This is one of Japan's oldest and most preserved samurai towns in the entire country. Now driving in, it was absolutely beautiful. I can only imagine what the city itself looks like. Before we get too far into it, I am starving. Let's go find something for lunch and check out the town. Immediately walking in, you feel like you've gone back in time, but I also noticed something else. This has gotta be a joke. It's 2.30 and everything is closed here. Uh, at this point, I can't help but just laugh. Oh, this is cool. Kubota family residence. Oh, we should at least check this out. This is an original home that they've restored here. House was built in the late Edo area, 19th century. Although a lot of the businesses and streets were shut down, some of the traditional houses remained open. You could tour a couple of them that have been maintained and kept original. You can find old photos of Hagi, residents of the home, and even wooden structures that are still standing today. Man, it's absolutely incredible to see these homes still intact and still used. Many of them though are like this. This one is the residence of Saki Kange, and he was a middle-class samurai of Hagi. That's insane. Not sure why a lot of them are closed, but we are out in the middle of absolute nowhere. Like I told you guys, we are deep, deep out here. Nonetheless, still absolutely beautiful to see this. I mean, people lived in these. It's incredible. While wandering the streets, I stumbled across this shrine built in the year 1254, housing a unique Tengu mask. This Tengu was to guard fishermen in the area, and I thought that this had a really cool story. Samurai Takasugi was brought here as a child in the 1600s to overcome his fear of the mask, and later on he grew up to become one of the greatest samurai leaders, and he fought until the end. I have no idea what's happening, but very cool. Finding things like this is what makes Japan, well, just Japan. Oh, yes, finally found a place that is open, I think. Oh, the one and only place that is open. Oh. Some homemade curry rice and salad. I'll take it. I'll take the small wins. Good so much star. Hi. At least I could say lunch was a success. There's one last thing that I want to try before we get out of the central Hagi city here. And I believe this one is open. I passed by it. Supposedly Hagi is really famous for their pudding. Let's go try some pudding. And then there's one last spot that I want to take you guys out here. Again, crossing our fingers, it's actually open. Success. Hagi pudding. Hi. Uh, oh yeah. On a hot day, this looks bomb. Matcha pudding. That is insane. Wow. <laughs> now I continued exploring the streets of Hagi for a while. They were filled with traditional Japanese homes that really made you feel like you were walking around 400 years ago. Also, being the only person around really added to the effect. I wanted to be engulfed in the culture, and that's exactly what I got. It is spicy outside. Oh my God. Basically everything might have been closed and halfway deserted, but there's still one spot 
I'm holding out hope on. There used to be a Hagi castle and there's an, an entire park dedicated to the ruins of this castle. I think that'll be really beautiful to see and really cool to see. So we should go check it out. Hopefully it's open. If it's not, we always figure it out. This looks promising, but we do have a little bit of a stroll here. <laughs> We're not gonna give up. Hagi castle ruins, let's do this thing. I really underestimated the humidity and heat down here. The, like you just hear it, it just sounds hot. It sounds like it would be hot outside. I'm a, I'm a permanent moist. This entire trip, a permanent moist. Don't let that distract you from the fact that Japan is absolutely beautiful though. Anyways, oh yeah, look. Walls of the castle. Shio Yagura Atto, the residence of Salt Watch Tower. Whoa. The history of Hagi is really incredible. Hagi Castle was a stronghold for the Meiji Samurai. It was designed to be especially difficult to capture. It was protected by three large moats, three stone walls, several gates, countless guardhouses, and the entire upper class samurai district. We are literally standing on top of what was once Hagi Castle here. Hard to believe that this was a five story castle just destroyed, and the only thing left is the base. I can't even imagine what this looked like back in the 14 or 1600s. I mean, it's truly incredible. The massive moat that surrounds the castle. Wow. Feels like you're in a piece of history here. The castle stood for over 250 years until it was torn down in the 1800s. This is incredible. This is Shuzukiyama Shrine. The Mori gave up their castle and left Hagi shortly after the Meiji Restoration in 1868. The Hagi built this shrine on the grounds of the former castle to show their devotion and gratitude to the Mori. Five of the Mori lords are, in, are enshrined here. There's five samurai lords enshrined at this shrine here. That's pretty incredible. Look at this. Well, the good news is we survived. We made it. After, honestly, a super tough day, everything that I wanted to do that was going to be so cool was unfortunately closed or deserted. But in those situations, you have to make the best of it. I knew I was coming out to the absolute middle of nowhere. Probably the worst time in the middle of summer, too. In these situations, you just got to make the best of things. And that's what we did today. Now, thankfully, we have a not very brutal drive into the mountains as we are camping tonight. Hopefully it's not too hot, but judging by the rest of the trip, that is uh, wishful thinking. But we're gonna head out to camp, have a good night in the van, and, and check out what this camping spot's like. Again, we are going very, very deep in the mountains, so no idea what to expect. Continue for one and a half kilometers. We're gonna do it together. We made it. Tonight we're going just a little bit bougie. We found an actual campsite out here in the mountains of Hagi, which is so sick because this is an actual campsite. This van actually has a plug-in. So that means we have power tonight. That is going to be so sick. We can have some lights on in the van without having to use my portable ones. And we get to use all the plugs to charge camera equipment and do some editing. Massive, massive score for tonight. Now, one thing I didn't take into consideration when coming here is I got no food. I didn't, I, I even went to the community to get water. Didn't think about getting food for tonight, <sighs> which that is kind of a bummer, but I did prepare for this. So actually this is what the van looks like with some power on. I mean, I can turn more lights on in the back. Super stoked about this. And it's not like too terribly hot like it was our first night in Sata. I mean, prepared for any and all situations. I brought some camping food, thankfully for situations like this. Not ideal, but honestly, nothing today was ideal. We always make it work. So it is about seven o'clock. I'm gonna go ahead and whip up some campsite dinner and we'll get to work. is 
the MVP. I'm stoked. I thought to bring these from back home. Tonight we have a little bit of chicken teriyaki rice. Maybe added too much water. <laughs> oh, it's kind of like a chicken teriyaki soup, but you know, itadaki ma. You know, for cooking this in a bag with some water, I can't hate on it. I never want to say like today sucked or anything because I'm so grateful to have this experience and to be doing what I'm doing and traveling Japan. Days like today were hard, where things definitely don't go as planned, which is usually the case, but in a way where I'm stuck alone in a place that I have no idea, never been before, Everything that I had planned was closed down and improvising and just putting me and putting me in uncomfortable situations. But you know, that's the entire point of Japan in a van, being able to figure these things out and doing things like this on my own. That's the whole point of this and just getting to experience Japan as a whole. I knew that I was coming out here to the depths as deep as you can go in Japan, to places where tourism isn't really big, where most people don't choose to go. and. This is the real side of it. I mean, a lot of the places close early or maybe aren't even open during this season. I figured it out, we improvised, and it's all part of Japan in a van. Going no sleeping bag tonight. I'm ready for bed. I'm gonna be the first to say, do not come camping in the middle of summer in a van in Japan. Terrible idea. Would I do it again? Probably, but thoroughly uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, we edited the video, just have a little bit left to do, but I'm exhausted. It's 11 o'clock, gonna try and get some sleep. We have another long driving day tomorrow, but a super important one. So I'm gonna try and get some rest and I will see you guys in the morning. <sighs> Thank you for hanging out with me today. It's always an adventure. So if you guys have not already, make sure you hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching Japan in a Van episode 3. We'll see you guys for the next one. Oyasuminasai.